Good morning. <laughs> How are you this morning? I hope you had a great week. Um, grab my coffee quick while we give people just a couple more minutes to uh, jump on. I think it's almost nine, so we can start in a minute. I uh, hope you, like I said, had a great week. Hope you have a great weekend planned. I know it feels like it's the um, official kickoff to the holiday season. There's a lot of bazaars and fairs going on here, and I'm sure in your area too. So hope you can get out there to some of those, support your local artists and your small businesses. Um, and I think, I guess, we can go ahead and get started here. So pastel painting today, um, working from a reference photo uh, shared with me um, by Karen Ferris, um, a great artist friend. You can find her at karenferris.com. It's F-A-R-I-S. Uh, she's also Instagram and Facebook. So this is the color reference photo. Uh, sorry, it's kind of curled. <laughs> it's been playing with it quite a bit. Um, you can see quite a bit of the color detail um, or the detail in the geese on that one. Uh, but when you squint, you, you lose that detail, making it a great value, uh, making them great value shapes. So that was one of the reason that, reasons that I selected this uh, reference. Um, it's got great value. So this is the one we're going to be working from. I'm actually going to put the color reference down over here, and I'm going to be working from my value study. I guess it's not smart with a cup of coffee in my hand. So this is the value study that I did from the reference image. And as you can see, I'm really trying to push the values. Um, I think my mistake in this value study is that um, the actual white, let me put my coffee down now. Mm, I will miss my coffee, but um, I left the white here and I think the white should be here so that the focal point remains on the geese and doesn't start to come up here into the water reflection. So I'm gonna be altering that uh, in the painting today. This image I leave um, in view. The beauty of doing a value study before you get painting is not only do you um, get to work out your shapes and your values, but you actually have one, um, you have a drawing in your pocket. You've, you've drawn it once, you're more familiar with it. So when you go to the painting, um, you can, be a little bit freer with the painting. So um, it, the more value, the more um, studies of the reference you're going to paint or the scene you're going to paint or the object, the more sketches, the more studies of it you can do, color studies, value studies, sketches, the more comfortable you become with the subject. And then the more the um, intuitive art can take over because you already have solved a lot of the initial problems that you might run into in a painting. Um, as you may know, um, I have been working on being bold and that for me means bold with color. It means bold, um, with a value and, um, not being afraid to leave my marks alone. So I have a very, I don't know if you can see it and I'm actually probably not going to use those blues, a very limited color palette. I have some oranges and then greens, and that's really what I want, and of course my blacks, but um, really what I wanna be able to use today. I do have um, three values of blue if I need them for the water, but um, I really wanna try and push um, the color aspect of this, or limited color of this painting. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is my first attempt at this painting, so you don't know, right? I probably do it three or four more times. I seem to enjoy doing that once once I do a painting, then I have more ideas for what I could do for the painting. So probably do it again. All that being said, let's jump on in and paint. So see if I can turn you this way. As you can see, um, I did go ahead. Are you looking at the 
Um, I did go ahead and pick out my colors and here they are. Um, I was checking them for value as well as for, you know, um, harmony. Um, before we started, I, I did um, my drawing so that it would um, not take me, I wouldn't have to waste your time doing the drawing when we got started. So having said all of that, I'm going to go ahead and just get started on this. Um, I'm going to start with these geese and I'm just going to, I'm painting on white pastel mat and this is an assortment of pastels and we've got some Terry's, we've got some Unison, we've got some Mount Vision, Great American. So I have some of all of them in here, probably more Unison today, uh, just because of the colors that I needed. I'm just going to start putting this in. And this, although you can't tell, is actually a very dark brown. It is not black. And on the white pastel mat, it takes a bit of um, pastel to start covering up the white. I like painting on the white. I like having some of that paper, um, having to cover some of that paper. I have a heavy hand when I paint, so for me, it actually works out pretty well. I'm going to take some of that same brown and come up here at the top. So the trick to this is to make it look like water and a reflection. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to make a ton of sense to a viewer later on. Add some of that dark brown down here too. So remember in pastel to do dark to light, so it's not a problem to put too much dark in right now. I'm going to come back in here with some of this. Look at that color. I don't know if you can, I hope you can see it. It's this gorgeous uh, orangey brown color. Okay. I think we need to go ahead and start with some of our this down here in the foreground is uh, the shore so it's kind of crunchy and crumbly and we'll add some definition to that later some more detail but right now we just want to kind of get our colors in and we do have some areas up here where the trees kind of come through. And I want to maybe take some of this. So when you're doing a water reflection, the key is to kind of go up and down. Uh, uh, that's up and down. <laughs> to go in all directions um, with your strokes, right? You want your strokes to blend down. And then also to go across. I like that. I think, however, we really need to add some greens up in here. These are going to be trees reflected, so I do think we'd need some of that olive green coming down in through there. That adds a little interest to that. Okay. We keep working on that as we go. And then add some in a reference image. Um, what, what is reflecting is the sky, and at the horizon, your sky is the lightest. So that is why we have ooh, dirty pastel. That is why this is lightest, lighter up here, 
than this water here. And I'm starting with orange in the water, even though it probably won't stay orange. I will come back with the, the blue greens and put those in. But I'm really quite enjoying these oranges with that olive green. Hey, let's think about these geese. So, I want them to be dark. I want this to be the area, them to be my focal point. And, and to do that, they can, you know, if they're the areas of great area of greatest contrast, um, they become my focal point. So that's what I'm trying to do is keep them dark and then have light around them so that they are the focal point. So this is my lightest. Blue green, we're going to come in with that. We want that here where they are. There's one too many legs there. I don't know. Three legged goose. And obviously, this is their reflection, so we can come right over it. And then, this, of course, is some water on top as well. So we'll probably go over this area several times, adding more color, just kind of working on the initial block in. I marked this paper off uh, to an eight by ten. That's the line that I that you're seeing, the square, the rectangle. Sorry. <laughs> back up and look and see what we've got here. Oh yeah, that's fun. I do like the green as the water. I think we probably need a little bit more dark. I think I want some of that olive green down here. Okay, stand back again. Okay, 
Be too light there, so we'll come back in. Yeah, that's better. So by going back and forth over my pastels, I'm actually using the pastel sticks to blend each other and to start filling all that white paper too. The pastel mat holds so much pastel that I'm not worried about running out of tooth. So I can keep going back and forth, um, adding some color and some interest without fear of running out of tooth. Okay. Well, I kind of like that. Uh, I really kind of like this. It looks like it's on the top of his head. There's some sun there. I like that. We am going to do that again over here, maybe. See what we think. I think I'm missing some really vibrant pops of color, so I'm going to add some of those in. This is, I don't know what kind of stick it is. It's a pretty hard pastel. Okay, that's kind of fun. I'm liking that so far. I do think perhaps we need to work on this area up here. I'm going to put in a little bit of a darker, cooler peach. Come back in with. I did just dig into yeah, my pastels. Uh, I think I need this green now up here. So to make this appear as water, you have to go across some of it, right? Uh, a trick I learned years ago was to actually take your finger and pull down and then swipe across. And that begins to look like a reflection in the water. Okay, we got a okay, let's 
a little bit lighter there. Uh, I like that. Okay. Mm, I like that quite a bit. So in the image, there were, let's try this one, a few branches and twigs down here. So we're going to go ahead and put some of those in. Tree fall, I don't know what you call it, right? We're going to go ahead and put some in. Catching some sunlight there. Catching a little there. I don't want that orange there. That's too bright. I think maybe this there. That might be better. And then maybe this one. Yeah. A tree or some leaves maybe. And then some of this, we're going to want to actually have this wet. So some of it should be sticking out of the water, and some of it should be in the water. Right here and reinstate. Ooh, that was a little rough. Too much reinstatement. I think we need just a little olive green in them to help incorporate them into the rest of the painting there. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Maybe we need then a little bit more olive green down here. Okay, I'm not loving this up here, so I'm going to keep playing with this.
back and look before I go too far. Oh, that one's so fun. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Thank you, Karen, for this reference. Again, I am really enjoying this. Okay, so I think the last thing um, I want to do is I do want to add some light up here to that. This is the lightest green that I am going in on top with. And I don't want too much, but just in a couple places. Too much just to show that there is some movement even up in here. And that should not be the lightest, this should be mid values. Come down, come over. I'm not touching it very much or very hard, just enough and to blend and smooth and then add some a little bit of line. This is a very soft pastel, so it is definitely blending as much as it is putting down pastel. So we need to be a tad bit careful with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Little back feather shadow actually came through the leg of in the image, I kind of liked that, so we'll add that back in. Okay. I think at this point um, is where I would sign it. I believe in signing my work. Um, right away, if you don't sign it, you won't come back and finish it. That's my opinion. I don't think you're going to be able to see that on there. You want your um, signature to be visible. There's a lot of different theories on how to sign your artwork. I like it to be visible, but not jump out at you or at the viewer. So I try to do it in a complementary color. And then sometimes I even come back and tap it in a little bit if it's too light like that. So I want you to be able to see it, but I don't need it to distract from the painting. Um, at this point in time, I think there's probably some um, more work that needs to be done. But um, as far as making you watch me fiddle with this for hours, um, we could probably stop the video here. Um, as you know, I leave these on my easel for a while, days sometimes, sometimes maybe not right on my easel, but certainly um, in eye shot where I can see them so that I can um, continue to look at them and make decisions about what works and what doesn't work. So I would stop here. This would be my first stopping point and look at this for several hours uh, to see or you know like I said days um, see what the painting is asking now so um, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, I hope that I'll post the, the this image um, and then if I work on it more or do it again I'll post those as well so you can see where I go with this but I hope you enjoyed this um, and uh, I hope to see you next time when I do another one. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye.